between other friends, that's a pretty good question. I would say I only introduce uh, friends to each other who I trust. So I'm not gonna introduce, if I don't trust someone, I'm not gonna bring them in my circle. So if you're introducing people to the people I trust, and it's like, people trust me, so I'll say a good thing. So I can be like, oh, Derek's a great guy, you should meet him. And most of my friends don't wanna meet him. Or I'll tell Derek, oh, I like this guy, I respect him, you should meet him. Derek's gonna, gonna if Derek tells me to meet someone, I'm not gonna ask a bunch of questions. I'm gonna go meet that person because I trust uh, Derek's judgment. Yeah. When, when you, make an introduction, you're lending someone your reputation. Or when, when somebody with a good reputation introduces you to somebody else that you might not otherwise have access to, they're lending you their reputation. And I think it's vitally important that you, you have to make that the number one priority is you have to you know maintain and somewhat enhance your friend's reputation. Whatever other interest you might have in meeting that person has to come secondary. You have to honor the primary relationship first. If you don't have a million dollars yet, you're living a much lesser life than what could be easily available to you with the right guidance. My head coach has freed up a few spots in his calendar to hold one-on-one -on -one strategy calls with the highest quality applicants. If you're doing well already and you're looking to accelerate your momentum and do even better, click the link in the description now and apply for your strategy session. More at the end of this video. About the homie Jake Shields. Jake and I spent an awful lot of time together the past uh, couple of years. And, um, you know, it's conversations that we have frequently about, you know, some silly human things and, uh, you know, negotiation related things. It's like, it's hard to negotiate if people don't trust you. How can they have a significant relationship with somebody you don't trust? Yeah. And, and we've we just had a on so many times ongoing conversation about that of like kind of disbelief. And I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'll say it from my perspective, and you can agree or disagree with anything or and add to it as you wish. But like, you know, I, I think there's a lot of like spineless men, and I think of them literally like a jellyfish, it's just like just a a little floaty thing in the water. It's kind of the the ocean just takes it where it goes and. You know, sucks up a couple little crumbs somewhere, mm -hmm. a couple like the, pieces of plankton. Yeah, like the second something said, I mean, I have some famous friends, like the second something said about some of them negative, like the media, people will just turn on them instead of sticking up for their friends, just spineless mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's mm -hmm. like, uh, I'll always either stick up for my friend no matter what, or if they do something really bad, you know, stay quiet and just don't comment on it. People are turning on their friends and just no loyalty. I think that goes so far. Yeah. Yeah. That, go, that goes, no one's gonna be loyal to you if you're not loyal to them. I think that's really, a, it's, it's super important that when people see that, uh, you know, I mean, the, the, a real low level version is like when, when somebody leaves the room and other people gossip about them a little bit. It's like when people behave that way, what do you think they do when you leave the room? What do you think they do then? It's the same shit. They say their little blah, 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 little bullshit about you. That's a low level version of it. but. On a higher level, that if you have friends that are well known, um, you know, I, I don't have to. I, I don't have this crazy idea in my head, and nobody did until a few years ago that that I have to agree with someone a hundred percent for us to have, you know, a friendship or to have a, a meaningful relationship. Like, um, I, I'd say I, I tend to have a lot of overlapping, you know, values and and ideas with most of my friends, but you know, there's also things that differ here and there. And uh, cool. It's, that's how humans were for all of human history <laughs> until the last couple of years where like, if anybody disagrees about anything, then they're a bad person, you know? That's this crazy communist shit that, uh, uh, you know, the past few years has been pushed. Um, so I don't even have to necessarily agree with that person or like what they said, but if it's my friend in general, I'm not gonna talk bad about them. And probably still say like, you know what? I might not agree with the guy about that thing, but he's still a great guy and he's been good to me. And I think that's important. and. Most people have zero friends. Most people have zero friends because they're not a good friend themselves. How, how would they have that? But you, how do you think about this? I think it's true. And I'm actually shocked the amount of people that have come up to me and like public, and disrespect to one of my friends and then think I'm still going to be cool with them. Like, like guys would be like, oh, I hate Nick Diaz and try to take a picture with me. I'll get away. And if I had a couple guys come up and disrespect Derek and like, and I try to act like we're cool, I'm like, no, 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 you're not going to talk crap about my friend to be cool. This is like, you can't come and disrespect my friend to be cool to me. I think so many people... They just allow that. They allow someone to disrespect a friend and just go along with it instead of calling them out. I think it's, again, just being too cowardly. Jake can't help himself but say crazy shit on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And every once in a while, I get a message from somebody, you know, so usually from random people, occasionally from somebody I know. And they say, you know, oh, I can't believe what your friend Jake said. You, know, you hang out with that guy. I don't care what he does. I don't care if he drowns his girlfriend. Said good to me. Always kept his word. Always showed up. Been consistent. Did every damn thing he ever said he was going to do. Did more than he ever said he was going to do. So, I, you know, be, be mindful about that. And let, people are so soft today that... Uh, those little things stand out a lot. If you're, if you're just a, a decent person with a decent level of integrity, you, you show up consistently, you keep your word consistently, you have a lot of advantages in life. You have a lot of advantages in life. I only introduce uh, friends to each other who I trust. So I'm not going to introduce, if I don't trust someone, I'm not going to bring them in my circle. So if you're introducing people to the people I trust, and it's like, uh, people trust me, so I'll say good things. So I can be like, oh, Derek's a great guy. You should meet him. And most of my friends are going to want to meet him. Or I'll tell Derek, oh, I like this guy. I respect him. You should meet him. Derek's going to, gonna. if Derek tells me to meet someone, I'm not going to ask a bunch of questions. I'm going to go meet that person because I trust uh, Derek's judgment. Yeah, but when, when you make an introduction, you're lending someone your reputation. Or when, when somebody with a good reputation introduces you to somebody else that you might not otherwise have access to, they're lending you their reputation. And I think it's vitally important that you, you have to make that the number one priority <laughs> is you have to you know, maintain and somewhat enhance your friend's reputation mm -hmm. with that other person. It's the number one, whatever the fuck else you want, whatever other interest you might have in meeting that person has to come secondary. You have to honor the primary relationship first that um, you're, you're, they're lending you their reputation, and you have to, to give it back in you know, some enhanced version of it that they'd be, it'd be easy for them to do that again. So, oh, whenever I introduce that guy to somebody, um, you know, my, the, the, the person that I knew, the person I introduced them to actually likes me more. They say good things. They're happy. They're excited. You know, I'd be happy to have another experience like that. So it's, it's enhanced that person's reputation that, that they made that, um, that they trusted you to do that. And if you don't do that, then you know they're not going to introduce you to more people in the future. They're just not. They're just not. So, I mean, imagine the the people that uh, there's very few people that are not fighters that are are more you know deeply entrenched or networked into that community than I am. I, I don't know who the f it is besides me. I don't know who it is. Um, Dana White. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, yeah, Dana White, not a fighter. <laughs> so there's there's very few people that. Um, so everybody talks, you know. Oh, can I meet so and so? Can I meet so and so? And I'm just like, no. Or I mean, usually it's a DM or some shit that I, it's not even worth a response. It's just silly. Like, like, why would I ever do that? Why would I ever do that for somebody that wasn't like extremely well known, extremely well trusted? Like, why would I ever do that? So, you know, it's it just a stupid, it really tells you about somebody else's stupidity that even asks something like that. Um, but, you know, if you, if you know someone well and uh, you want to meet other people from their social groups, like, you're, you're representing their reputation. So you, you have to be very mindful about that, that, um, you know, you, you, better, you better make sure that their reputation's enhanced for that experience, or why the fuck would they ever do that again? So, you know, I don't know. Uh, you, you, you've met plenty of people just coming to my place. You met different, yeah. you know, a lot of different people there. Uh, show up, and random people are there that are, you know, sometimes interesting. Um, or you know, you introduced me to a lot of other fighter people. Mm -hmm. But like, it's you know, I'm always careful who I introduce you to, and I know anyone at your house is going to be good people. So, yeah. but it's never been, you know, there's never been a weird moment. I'm not aware of a weird moment where you no. you introduced me to somebody, and you know, they would say something later about it that wasn't positive. Yeah, exactly. So it has to be that way. You know, it's very stupid to not behave that way. So, Most people are stupid. Yeah, something similar to this. I, I ranted to you about 10 minutes yesterday because I was frustrated when I saw one of my young fighters because uh, mm. I have this fighter with a ton of potential and I hooked up with Ali, which is like one of the most respected, famous uh, managers in the sport. He got him a big fight out in Dubai for his level and he f***ed the fight off. And then I was furious to this kid and the kid wasn't under understanding why I was mad at him instead of Ali. And it's like, I just put my word in to have this guy managing you and you just the whole thing up. So you're not just disrespecting him, you're disrespecting me. And the kid didn't understand that he just basically told me to go myself. And he's a young up and coming with potential, but a couple mistakes like that, his career might be done. He doesn't understand you can't, you know, he, put back, he pissed off the biggest manager in the sport, pissed me off who's training him. It's like, these things, he thinks it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal. 
So something that could seem like it's a small little thing can, can be massive. And most industries are pretty small. I mean, most people here are probably in different industries, but pretty much any industry is pretty small, the people at the top, right? Some more so than others, but. I kind of have this loose model in my head. I think there's, you know, a thousand mm -hmm. people in the world, whoever you might be, that, mm -hmm. that, might, that group would have some overlap and some differences depending on your personality and what you're interested in. But there's like a thousand people in the whole world that you'd kind of like to know, that you, you'd like to meet, you'd like to have in your group, you know? And you're probably not going to be friends with all thousand of them. But, you know, when you're, when you're building that peer group and you're getting around the, you know, the people that you want to be around, um, guess what? They all know each other. It's a small world there and everybody knows each other. And when you do something retarded, there's consequences to that. Then nobody's ever going to talk to you about it. It won't be a conversation where people can say, oh, you know, oh, you know, this one thing, maybe if you apologize for that. It's like, no, at the, the higher levels of things, it's like, nobody, nobody wants to make a new enemy. Nobody wants to, it's not worth their time. It's not worth their energy. They don't give a fuck about you. They're not going to make a new enemy by giving you, you know, some honest feedback. They're just going to, you know, you'll be totally ignored and totally barred from being, in, you know, invited to anything cool again ever. And you can go hang out with the other Denny's managers that showed poor judgment in life and, now our managers at Denny's. So that's like, does anybody not know what Denny's is? Are there people from foreign countries? <laughs> Denny's is like a shitty American Lola restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a shitty restaurant in America mm -hmm. that, you know, you're, it's okay to eat at once a year, but you certainly wouldn't want to work there. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly wouldn't want it to be your career. What else? Go ahead. Derek, first of all, thanks as always to bring Jake. I've seen you guys countless times over the last two years. It's always amazing webinars, live events. And I think whenever you two are together, like being loyal is one thing that comes up a lot. And, you know, I really appreciate that. I think when I was young, I, I was never like totally unloyal or something like that. But I think it was not until I, I was 19, I guess, where I met somebody who was, uh, he didn't like the law too much, let me say like that. And he, he also introduced me to a few friends who also didn't like the law too much. Mm. It was a whole different culture compared to like the, the normal friends that I had. They were like extremely loyal. They always kept their word, which was, you know, at first quite surprising to me as somebody who had never something to do with the, that kind of people. But I really learned a lot from them, like a ton that I've never, I mean, except from here, I didn't learn that anywhere else in my life. You know, like the values, like keep your word all the time. Could you maybe talk a little bit about how you, from from whom you got these values? I know that you had um, some kind of a rough childhood. If, uh, you had the same experience with these kind of people that uh, actually taught you these values, and for Jake the same. Did you grow up with that, or? I think they're they're just an honor, and um, you know, people say things like there, you know, there's uh, no honor amongst criminals or whatnot, but. Um, if you think criminals are bad, go to business school or law school and see how much loyalty you'll find there. So, <laughs> you don't, if you're in a, a, a university and you think that any of those people are your friend, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, I think in graduate business school, um, I never had the, any confusion that I had one friend there. There's, there's plenty of smart people there, but they have no loyalty. There's, you know. The first year they make, you know, uh, superficial friendships with each other and they go drink together and do, you know, silly little things together. And then the second year when recruiting season happens and they're competing for the same consulting jobs and investment banking jobs, then they all talk shit about each other about like, well, he got drunk that one day at that party and, you know, she drank so much she was puking on the boat. She might have just got seasick, but they just go talk shit and say awful things about each other. And I thought it was really disgusting. Um, and I was happy I didn't participate in any of it, that I didn't like them during their, their bonding phase. And I really didn't like them when I see them backstab each other, but it's a different culture, you know? Um, there's a saying in business or on Wall Street that they say, if you, if you work on Wall Street and you want a friend, buy a dog, because you won't have any friends there. So that's how most people are. So, you know, I think uh, the last couple enclaves in the world where People still have like you know, integrity or like a, a culture of, of honor is uh, in, in some, not all, in some uh, higher level of criminal type organizations. There's still a, a sense of um, 
I mean, you, you have to be able to trust each other to, to get things done. And, you know, if you're a favela kid in Brazil, um, there's consequences to breaking your word. And if you're a ghetto kid in Chicago, there's consequences to breaking your word. So it's important that for your reputation and for your ability to do business in the community, you know, it's, it's very important. I, said, I just thought of one more. There's two more places. I think the fight community, um, people that have a lot of personal responsibility and, you know, ownership over their results, it's important that you don't lie to yourself. And uh, you can elaborate on this that element more in, in just a moment. Um, but I think it's very important that you keep your word and people trust you. And uh, if you want to have good relationships with, you know, coaches or managers and teammates and, and yourself, then it's important to keep your word. People trust you. You're going to do the shit you said. I think the third one is maybe in the jewelry industry that, uh, especially amongst the Jews, which there's a lot of Jews in the jewelry industry. And, you know, there's uh, actually, there's actually a case study about this. I know some of the people in, in person, but in real life, but there's actually a, an academic study about this as well of like the relationships where these different families that have, you know, jewelry businesses, um, they, they, they intermarry like some medieval shit. Thank you. They marry their sons and daughters together intentionally. And um, here you go, baller. Cool. All right, we're set till 8 a.m. <laughs> um, they literally, you know, marry their, you know, it's kind of halfway arranged marriages with their family that they want uh, people to trust each other. And, you know, your word there means a lot. If you, you say, you know, hey, send over that $200,000 watch. I got somebody who wants to look at it. Like they don't need to sign a contract or do a, you know, there's not some paperwork about it. It's just like if you, if you said, hey, send the, you told the other jeweler to have somebody bring that watch over here or, you know, hey, bring those diamonds over here. If somebody that's interested in, uh, you know, these specific, you know, diamonds like that, then um, it's not a problem, you know, that people trust each other, that your, your word is enough that, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars, half a million dollars or something, um, you know, because you you spent you grew up in that community, you were raised in that community, you, you know people over in the past. So that's very important for your business in that type of industry. That you you have to be able to your word has to mean something. And 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 there's also consequences again. You know, maybe not the the same sort of consequences that would happen in, you know, the favela or the the ghetto kid, but. Uh, there's certainly reputational consequences that you know it's going to be very bad for your business and. Uh, and, and probably bad for, you know, those are generational businesses, some of those, where your children are going to run that business and so on in the future. You might be running your father's or your grandfather's business, and your children are going to run it later, and you, you've, you've harmed your whole family's reputation if you do something wrong, you know? It's not just you, so it'd be very shameful to, to do something, you know, inappropriate. How, how do you think of that type of the honor culture type thing, or yeah, how, I think how do you think of it in your words? Part of it is just, you know, I guess so annoyed if someone doesn't do their, they're, they're going to do something they're going to do. So that bugs me. So I do it. And I think, you know, yeah, maybe the same. Never really thought about it. My brother was kind of, you know, kind of hard growing up, maybe doing some, some elements and r rolling and some stuff he shouldn't have been. And he was very big on your honor. You keep your word to me. And he was, you know, I, I was scared of my brother. And if he says you do this, you better do it. So that's kind of, I grew up seeing that and the people he's around. And then, you know, kind of a weird element, but hanging out guys like Nick and Diaz, there was times I think a lot of guys probably know them. They were famous. For, we, we were dumb. You know, we'd get in fights in like Stockton all the time. But I knew no matter what happened, they were going to stand and fight beside me. It didn't matter if it was 50 people. And there was times, it might be me and Nick, but we're, but and he wouldn't run. We were going to beat up together. And it never, ever crossed my mind to run. It was just obviously we're going to beat up together. And it's weird. You know, I remember we got jumped one time. The other guys ran. I'm like, what was I supposed to do? And I was so used to like, you know, being around Nick and stuff. And it's like, of course, we're just going. A lot of times the crazy part is, You'd actually win when you stand when you stand back to back and start fighting. You'd surprise yourself. But just having, I mean, obviously most people aren't going to be in these situations. But when we were. It was nice having a friend that you knew, whatever matter what, was going to stay there with you, whatever matter what happened. And that's a that's definitely a rarity. These are situations for all older and shouldn't be in now. But it's still, I do know if we run into some stuff. I know Derek's not going to run, and Derek knows I'm not going to run. Hopefully, we'll never be in those situations anymore. But it is important to have friends that are that are, aren't just going to something happen. They're going to run off. <laughs>
You watch this video all the way through and that tells me you're dedicated to learning more and earning far above average outcomes in your life. Congratulations for that. But now it's time to take action. If you could have earned those results by yourself, you would have done it already. My head coach has opened up a few spots on his high demand calendar for an in-person one-on-one strategy session to help you. On this call, we'll give you the pragmatic advice that you can implement tonight to get laser focused on the right metrics and leave mediocrity far behind in your past. Click that link right now in the description below and apply for your call immediately. Do it now.